Azure Traffic Manager is a DNS-based traffic load balancer. It is an external DNS solution and it extends the functionality of DNS beyond simple name. It gives IP resolution by adding load balancing. It also offers advanced features such as geofencing and performance name resolution. In this video, we will be covering what is Azure Traffic Manager, Traffic Manager routing methods, Priority routing, performance routing, geographic routing, weighted routing, and comparison between Azure Load Balancer, Application Gateway, and Traffic Manager. In the end, we will also share details about our free Azure Solution Architect Masterclass, which will not only help you understand basics, but it will also give you an idea of the learning path to follow. It would be helpful especially when you're preparing for Azure Solution Architect certification, which requires you to clear two exams that are Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies AZ303 and Microsoft Azure Architect Design, that's AZ304. For the certification exam, you should have an understanding of Azure Traffic Manager. Welcome to another episode of Azure video series from K21 Academy, where we take you from complete beginner covering configuring infrastructure, authentication and securing data solution for the cloud and Azure storage to all the way identity and security, business continuity strategy, deployment, migration, integration and infrastructure strategy, including how to prepare for the AZ303 and 304 certification exam. We have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies, that's AZ303. And in this clip, our instructor will talk about Azure Traffic Manager. So, this is a clip taken from a module on implementing load balancing and network security. Now, let's hear from an expert trainer on the same. So Microsoft Azure Traffic Manager allows you to control the distribution of user traffic to your service endpoints running in different data centers across the world. So Traffic Manager works by using the DNS to direct end user requests to the most appropriate endpoint. Service endpoints supported by Traffic Managers include Azure VMs, web apps, and cloud services. You can also use Traffic Manager with external and non-Azure endpoints as well. Traffic Manager selects an endpoint based on the configured traffic routing method. Traffic Manager supports a range of traffic routing methods to suit different application needs. Once the endpoint is selected, the clients then connect directly to the appropriate uh, service endpoint. Traffic Manager provides endpoint health check and automatic endpoint failover, enables you to build a highly available application uh, that is resilient to failure, including the failure of an entire Azure region. All right, so if, if you look at uh, the diagram that's on the screen right now, so you can see that the traffic manager distributes the traffic based on the routing method. So we will get to see what are these routing methods and how traffic manager is deciding to which server it should, or which server or which region it should uh, direct the request to. All right, uh, so we will go with the first one, priority routing. So when a traffic manager profile is configured for priority routing, it contains a prioritized list of service endpoints. Traffic manager sends all traffic to the primary, I mean, which the primary is the one which has the highest priority first. If the primary endpoint is not available, traffic manager routes the traffic to the second endpoint and so on. Availability of the endpoint is based on the configured status, whether it's enabled or disabled, and the ongoing endpoint monitoring. The priority traffic routing methods allow you to easily implement a failover pattern. Uh, you configure the endpoint priority explicitly or use a default priority based on the endpoint order. So what happens is, let's say you have the entire infrastructure in East US and that is your primary location and you have a similar setup in West uh, US as well, but that's the, the, the priority order, that's the second one. And you have a similar setup in uh, Central US as well, uh, that would give you three regions, right? So let's go to the whiteboard and uh, I, think, I think that would be the easiest way to explain this. 
All right, so let me create a new whiteboard here. All right, so in this is your East US. Uh, you have uh, um, you have a load balancer here. Let's say, for example, you have a load balancer here. You have three VMs here, and uh, these are going to another load balancer, which has a SQL server in the back end so this is your setup in east us so let me copy this entire thing so this this is another replica of what we have and I'll just move this to the side. All right. So I'll just use a riser to erase this and this. And uh, this is uh, West US, and this is uh, Central US. So the priority given here is one, two, and three. And I have a traffic manager here. Perfect. So the users are coming in, the endpoints will be going here, here, and here. Since the priority one is given to East US, all the requests will be directed to this region. And the users will be getting served, everything will run. Let's say there was a flood or something, uh, a tornado, or something happened in East US, and this entire region went down. So what the traffic manager does is, it will check the endpoint, if the endpoint is available or not. Since this region is not available, it will go with the one which has the second priority, this one. So the request will start coming to this region. Let's say if West US is also down, then it will go to the third region because the priority is three here. So this is very useful in case of a failover pattern uh, where we will use primary routing. Sorry, priority routing. Uh, Next one that we have is uh, performance routing. So performance routing is a method designed to improve the responsiveness by routing traffic to the location that's closest to the user. The closest endpoint is not necessarily measured by the geographic distance. Instead, traffic manager uh, determines the closeness by measuring the network latency. Traffic Manager maintains a internet latency table to track the round trip time between IP address ranges and each Azure data center. With this method, Traffic Manager looks up the source IP address of the incoming DNS request in the latency table. Traffic Manager chooses an available endpoint in the Azure data center that has the lowest latency for that IP address range that returns the endpoint in the DNS response. Right, so we'll see how it looks like. So I'm just gonna undo this, all these changes. Okay, so we don't have priorities as of now. So traffic manager maintains a latency table. Let's say my client is here, client. They are in the IP range 13.27.11.5. And based on this uh, latency, uh, traffic manager will calculate the latency to each of this endpoint. Let's say this one is 116 milliseconds. This one is 115 milliseconds. This is 110 milliseconds. So since this is the lowest one, this one is giving the better performance because you will get the response. This is a round trip time. So if a request comes here and goes back, that will be done in 110 milliseconds. So this on performance basis, this is the first one that's uh, traffic manager is going to pick up. Let's say this region goes down or something happened here. It will pick up the next one. 115 is the lowest one. So it will start sending requests to here. That's uh, all about performance uh, routing. The next one that we have is uh, geographic routing. So as the name says, uh, it's it's about the geography. The other performance routing, we, it is also about the closeness, but it's not the geographical distance. It's actually looking for the internet latency. Uh, 
but in geographic routing each endpoint uh, with that profile needs to have a set of geographical locations assigned to it so any request from those region gets routed only to that endpoint some planning is required when you create a geographic endpoint a location cannot be in more than one endpoint so basically what happens is I'll have an endpoint if you look at the image I have one endpoint which is for Germany uh, and there is another endpoint which is for the world and there is a nested profile as well so inside the nested profile I am using priority routing so endpoint one will have the priority one and so what happens is the, the traffic hits the traffic manager let's say I'm logging in from Asia it will hit the nested profile in Asia uh, I am using a priority routing inside that it will go to the first one let's say the first one is down it will go to the second one if I am not logging in from Germany Mexico or Asia it will go to the endpoint two. if I go to and if I log in from Germany that will directly go to endpoint one so this is about the geographic routing the next one that we have is weighted routing uh, weighted traffic routing allows you to distribute traffic evenly or to use a predefined weighting in the weighting traffic method you assign weight to each endpoint in the traffic manager profile configuration the weight is an integer from 1 to 1000 this parameter is optional if omitted the traffic manager uses a default weight of 1 higher the weight higher is the priority so here um, we have uh, three regions I mean three endpoints where weight is 50 5 and 50 since region A is down completely the one with the highest weight is 50 so that will get the that will be the one which is serving the request if that goes down 5 is the one so higher the weight higher the priority all right so let's see what we have in the next slide so uh, this is just a comparison of what we discussed so far when to use Azure Load Balancer Application Gateway and Traffic Manager. So Load Balancer gives you a L4 routing and Application Gateway that's in uh, L7. And Traffic Manager is just a DNS uh, traffic control based on DNS Resolver it will uh, route the traffic. Protocols uh, it can be used with TCP and UDP application gateway is uh, just for web traffic traffic manager it supports backends and endpoints so load balancer can take vms and vm scale set uh, with application gateway we have a much more advanced much more bigger set of services like vms vmss app service ip addresses and post names traffic manager supports cloud services app services app service slots and public ip addresses Coming to the network connectivity, uh, load balancer is there for both external and internal. External is the public one, internal is the internal load balancer. Application gateway also supports external and internal. Traffic manager doesn't require internal. That makes a lot of sense, right? Because it comes with the DNS resolution and you don't need a traffic manager internally for that. So that is a completely external service. So that was a clip taken from one of the modules of our step-by-step -step training program on Azure Solution Architect certification, including exams AZ-303 and AZ-304. I would like to invite you for a free masterclass on how to kickstart your journey as Azure Solution Architect, right from learning basics like implementing storage account, virtual networking, and getting certified by using our step-by-step 12 weeks roadmap to go from complete beginner to a certified Azure Solution Architect. If you are interested, Register for our free class by going on to k21academy.com slash is it 30302. I highly recommend you to go through this free class to see what to expect in the exam, learn basics about Azure Solution Architect certification and to get a demo on deploying Azure Container Instance. So please visit k21academy.com slash is it 30302. Please click on the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our future videos. I will see you in another episode of Azure video series from K21 Academy. Till then, take care.